Hello guys, Saul here and welcome to Shexel Tutorial. In this video, we are going to look at the Vendor Audit Schedule. So as the name connotes, the Vendor Audit Schedule is a unique template for planning audits on vendors to make sure that only the approved vendors are used for our source services. Now this template will help you to meet the ISO 9001 standard clause 8.4 that talks about control of our source processes, product and services. So without further ado, let's get straight into the features. Now, there's a table of content that helps users to navigate within the workbook. Now, over here is approved list where you provide your list of vendors and the types of audits that you're going to carry out and other tables for, like audit notification, whether yes or no, vendor approval in terms of approved and disqualified, you can actually add on to the list. And over here is actually part of the performance ranking functions I've introduced in the audit schedule. So just bear in mind that this template has been designed for up to 30 vendors. And it's going to rank the vendors on a scale of 1 to 30, all right? Now, in case you want to go beyond 30, you need to get in touch for customization. Now, the audit schedule is the main working area, and this is where you actually plan all your audits for the year. So, you're going to provide by, you're going to update your list of vendors in here, the type of evaluation you're going to carry out, whether pre-qualification, follow-up, or incident-based, the last audit date, the next audit date, whether audit notification has been sent, and the days due to the next audit date, all right? And if audit has been carried out, you need to provide the date of the audit, whether a report has been sent, whether a follow-up is needed, in terms of yes and no, and then the audit score, all right? Now, take note that the standard clause 8.4 requires that organizations apply a criteria for evaluation selection and monitoring of vendors. Now that criteria should be able to generate an audit score, all right? So take note, the criteria is your audit checklist and that checklist should be able to generate an audit score. And that is what you're gonna input here to be able to rank the performance of the vendor on a scale of one to 30, and it's gonna give the position of the vendor. And based on the score, you can now decide to approve the vendor. So the templates here is gonna help you to keep a list of approved vendors and those that have been disqualified based on your criteria all right now once you carry out your audits you need to log your audits you know in here and this is just to give you a quick overview or a quick summary of some of the audits that you've carried out or basically all the audits you've carried out so that at least you don't have to go all the way into the audit report to read you know what the outcome was so this will sort of serve as some sort of, sort of historical information for quick reference now this is the main excitement of this vendor audit schedule we have this dashboard that is beautifully designed you know to give you an insight into the audit schedule so we have vendors that are on schedule vendors that have been disqualified vendors that have been approved the type of activities we've carried out you know monitoring activities so pre-qualification follow-up incident based audit that we've carried out and then the vendor status what's the percentage of approved not percentage but how many vendors have been approved and how many vendors have been disqualified that is also here and then the vendor performance so you can tell technip is stopping on the list with 98 points and here is the overall you know score as far as our vendors are concerned so the goal is that you want to achieve you know 100 percent if that's possible but you want to make sure that all the vendors are really doing well so that you can have a higher score of you know vendor performance now these are the report that we use for the dashboard so these are report that you can actually use you know for your individual reporting so over you have the days due overdue you have the vendor performance in terms of you know performance and in terms of the audit score and we have you know vendor approval status how many vendors are disqualified and how many are, have been approved and over here is literally just to list your approved vendors all right now there's the excitement about this template we have the 30 star rating and I, as I earlier mentioned, that is based on a scale of 1 to 30 because we have 30 vendors in the template. So we have the 30 star rating and we have the 1 star rating for the worst performing vendor. All right. Now, just take note, this section is dynamic. As you know, the lesser vendors you have, the lesser star ratings you're going to have. So if you have three vendors, there's going to be three star ratings. If you have five vendors, it's going to be five star ratings. So this section is dynamically, you know, determined. So there are a lot of formulas in here. Once you click, you're going to notice. There's formula in here, so just take note you don't delete anything here, all right? So without wasting time, let's get straight into how you can use this template, all right? So just remember that you need to provide your list of vendors, list of, you know, monitoring activities on the vendor or whatever means of evaluation that you're going to carry out on the vendor. You, you provide all of them here and you leave this as it is. We've, we've pre-built it for up to 30 vendors, all right? Just take note. Now, over here is the audit schedule. This is where you take your time. So now let's get rid of... You know this dummy data because 
you know, it's just a dummy data. But as you're deleting, just take note of columns that have formulas, right? Like over here, that's the formula. If you click on it, you look in the formula bar, you see there's a formula in there. So assuming you included it in the selection, you're gonna get this feedback and you'll be tempted to want to unprotect the sheet and, and try to delete and you end up deleting the formula. So just take note, whenever you are giving this feedback, it's definitely mean you are rather doing something wrong and you need to, you know, check the instructions or try to understand how to go about it. But it's better you always delete column by column, all right? So that just to be on the safer side, delete column by column. All right, so let me just get rid of these ones really, really quick, all right? And we'll be done shortly. All right, so now that I have nothing in here, all right? Again, if you have some data in here, you want to delete as well, but just take note, this is just one entry, not a big deal, but the main database is this section, all right? So once you have gotten rid of the database, we need to go to the data tab on the menu and we click on refresh all, all right? So as you can see, there's nothing to report, there's nothing to report, there's nothing to report, nothing to report, nothing to report, nothing to report here as well, all right? So zero star rating. Now let's go into the audit schedule and plan our audit for the year. Assuming we are, we are still at the latter part of 2022, so let's assume that we have a couple of, you know, audits, uh, some vendors more we need to evaluate. So we have had a new vendor who want to join. We are trying to, you know, engage the vendor. So we're going to do pre-qualification audit. So that there's no last audit date. So let's assume the next audit date is on the 15th, which is tomorrow. And audit notification was sent to the, uh, to the auditees and... As you can see, the day is going to be determined automatically based on the next audit that you, date that you'll be providing. Now, let's assume the audit has indeed been carried out, all right? Or let's let's try to remove it, all right? So just take note, when you're planning your audit, you're going to be populating this section uh, to a large extent until you eventually get to carry them out and you update this section, all right? So let's, let's assume you've carried out the audit. So we provide the dates of the audit. We did send them an audit report. No follow-up is needed. The audit score based on our criteria or based on our audit checklist, the performance was 90%, and that is pretty well. So we approve the vendor. All right. So we approve the vendor. Move on to another vendor on the list. That's Victor Hughes. And it's a follow-up audit we're carrying out. And there was a last audit that was in June. All right. And then the next audit is again tomorrow. Audit notification has been sent. And again, let's assume that the audit has indeed been carried out, so we provide it accordingly. Audit report has been sent. No follow-up is needed. The performance was 80, all right? Sorry, 80. So you can see automatically ranks it on the second, and then the audit, the vendor has been approved, all right? So let's assume vendor has been approved. Let's move on to the last. That's France International. Assuming they had an incident, and we did do a um, last audit has been no, there's no last okay. Let's assume there was a last audit date, and we've planned the audit on this day. Uh, audit report has been sent. We have carried out the audits. Um, sorry, audit notification has been sent. We've carried out the audit. Audit report has equally been sent. Follow up is needed with provider, and the audit performance is called 30 percent. All right, so with 30 percent, obviously, that's a very bad performance, and we are saying we're going to disqualify this vendor. All right, so with this information in the database. And the fact that we would have logged in, you know, the audit with, you know, summary of information from the audit report, we come to the data tab on the menu, we click on refresh all, and it's going to update the dashboard, all right? So just take note that we have three vendors on schedule. One has been disqualified, two have been approved. These are the audit activities we carried out, and these are, this is the performance of the vendors. Now over here is just to show how many have been disqualified against, those that have been approved. Now, this pie chart, we need to make sure this data point is white, all right? So you can always review some of the dashboard, you know, the colors and all of that, you can always do that. Now, these are all the reports we use for the dashboard and you can actually utilize them for your own internal reporting. Now, over here, as you can see, it used to be 30 star rating, now it's three star rating. So Alibetan is, is leading with three star ratings and Baker, followed by Baker Hughes and France International. Right, so this is how exciting this template is, and um, you can actually use it to demonstrate how you are evaluating your your vendors, monitoring them, and making sure that they continually uh, remain in good standing to produce or deliver conforming input into your production or into your you know your business, so that you do not end up producing non-conforming outputs or non-conforming product that would you know affect customer satisfaction. All right, so that is 
all about this template. In case you're interested in it, all you need to do is just visit us in www.shexel.com. You scroll all the way to the middle. You find the, the template right, you know, in here, all right? You find it right in here. You click on this, you click on it. That is the vendor or the schedule. And it to take you to the product page. And that's where you can actually view all the pictures. And you can actually drill down by clicking on the download file. It's gonna take you to the download page. And that's where you find a video and a brief information about the product and you can actually check out. So I hope you find this template very useful. In case you want another demo, feel free to book a meeting or request for a live chat. We're gonna to respond to you ASAP. All right, so thank you all for your attention and meet again in another video. Bye for now.